Our uh, next stop on this journey of the neck is to look at the cervical compartments. The cervical compartments, of which there are four, are organized in a vertical direction. Let's take a look at the first compartment. Here we're looking at the uh, visceral compartment right in through here. It is surrounded by the yellow line, which is a sheath, and we'll get to that sheath and its name here shortly. But the visceral compartment contains the thyroid gland. See one lobe there and the opposite lobe here. Uh, we also see in this view the trachea, and then lying posterior to the trachea, we have the esophagus. Next, we have two vascular compartments. These are oriented more laterally. So we see one on the left side of the image here. We see the opposite one here on the right side of the image. Each one of the vascular compartments contains a pair of vascular structures. The one that we see out here more laterally oriented is the internal jugular vein, and then the one situated more medially is your common carotid artery. That same relationship exists on the left side of the image where we have the lateral most structure being your internal jugular and then the medial structure being your common carotid. The fourth compartment is referred to as the vertebral uh, compartment and the vertebral compartment is containing structures that relate or associated uh, with this region of our anatomy and we can see various vertebral muscles that are identified by these multiple leader lines. When we sum everything up, uh, we can characterize the cervical compartments as being the four V's. One visceral, two vascular, which brings us to three, and then the fourth uh, V would be the vertebral compartment. Next, we need to understand the cervical fascia. When we look at the fascia of the neck, we are looking at fascia that is related superficially, and then we have fascia that is referred to as the deep cervical uh, fascia. The superficial fascia is identified in through here. This particular structure that's a part of the superficial fascia is the platysma muscle. Anterior to the sternocleidomastoid, this superficial fascia would run posteriorly. Next, we have deep fascia. The deep fascia is more complex in that it is divided into several distinct layers. And so the next uh, sequence of slides will allow us to explore uh, these distinct layers of the deep fascia. Here is an image that depicts in color the various deep fascial components. See some here in blue, for example, lying in magenta, uh, lying in yellow, lying in purple. So let's identify these various deep fascial uh, layers. The first is referred to as the investing deep fascial layer. This contains the sternocleidomastoid and trapezius muscles. The deep fascia that's investing is shown here, for example, and we can see that this investing fascia at this point is splitting and continuing on the deep surface of the trapezius as well as on its superficial uh, surface. In the posterior midline, it joins to form one layer. And then as you go to the opposite side, that single investing fascial layer divides with one division going superficial to the trapezius and again one going uh, deep to the trapezius. And as you come anteriorly, they join to form one investing layer and then they uh, separate around the sternocleidomastoid again, forming a superficial component or lamina, as well as a deep uh, lamina. The second deep fascial layer to identify is known as the pretracheal fascia. That is shown in yellow. Uh, this will surround the structures that uh, 
are found in the visceral compartment. And so the pretracheal fascia is surrounding your thyroid gland, two lobes here, the trachea here in the center, and then posterior to the trachea, the esophagus. Uh, next, we uh, want to understand the carotid sheath and the structures that are contained uh, within this deep fascial layer. Uh, most of them are illustrated in the uh, image here that we see on the, on the right. But if we take a look here, here is the carotid sheath on the left side of the image, carotid sheath on the right side of the image, and the two vascular structures that we see here within the carotid sheath would be the internal jugular vein, and your common carotid artery. The carotid sheath does extend more superior to this view, and it will uh, surround or envelop the internal carotid artery uh, as well. Also, we have a nerve within the carotid sheath. Uh, this is a substantial, uh, fairly large nerve. It's a cranial nerve. Uh, we see it here on the opposite side as well. This is the cranial nerve number 10, also known as your vagus nerve. And then the last uh, structures that are contained within the carotid sheath, uh, not shown here, uh, would represent deep uh, cervical uh, lymph nodes. If cancer spreads to these deep cervical nodes, uh, these nodes uh, would be uh, enlarged and palpable. Uh, as we continue looking at the deep fascial layers, here we can see that the pre-vertebral uh, uh, layer, right in through here, fairly extensive. It's surrounding the vertebral uh, compartment, and so that would include the vertebra in the region, the spinal cord within the vertebral canal, and then more externally, we can see several different uh, vertebral-related uh, muscles that would be enclosed by the pre-vertebral deep fascial layer. 